Joe from the Jeep shop just driving home. And uh, I guess about an hour ago, my voltmeter went down to zero, or at least till nine. The check gauges came on. So that's nice. It was working great this morning, and now all of a sudden, uh, no bueno. So uh, after doing some uh, research and uh, thinking about what it could possibly be, I started doing the old power windows and wiper test to see how bad it is. I've been driving for about an hour and a half, and the Jeep's still going strong. Check out the speed of the wipers. This is on high. That's high. So I think that's a pretty good indication that the alternator is pretty much shot. And it just came on all of a sudden. So I've had all the windows closed, no heater, no radio, no headlights, nothing. Basically just driving the Jeep and having all the power go to the fuel injectors and computer. So we're gonna go stop by AutoZone, have them check out the alternator, do a quick test and see what's going on. So here's a little test you can do. I just pulled over and you can see that the volts is all the way down to low and the check gauges is, is on. My big gorilla hands. So I'm gonna turn the Jeep off and you'll see what happens. What happened? Oh. You can see the volts come back, see? Starts right up. All right, definitely not 13 or 14 volts. Luckily, I'm right in front of my neighborhood too, so I wouldn't want to do this on 95 or <laughs> somewhere. So we're just gonna drive, making sure we're careful at all times. As soon as you get about 30 or 40 miles an hour, telltale sign of the ECM, PCM, whatever you want to call it, doing a nice voltage check, and then when the computer says, hey man, there's not enough volts, this is what it does. Before I go do any work on the Jeep, I must eat my okay, lunch. Back from lunch. Good lunch. Um, so I got 12.12 volts. Uh, motor's not running, um, but we're going to do a quick test to see if we can uh, see how much uh, amps and volts is uh, going to the alternator so I uh, actually did the battery right so let's and go. there's the answer to the mystery 11.8 volts with the alternator on this should start dropping yeah oh yeah sounds really quiet too actually I love the way it sounds it sounds great <laughs> Not at 11.78 volts. I'll tell you what, I don't know what battery this is. It looks like some kind of Bobo battery. There's no label on it. Um, but it worked out really great. Got me all the way home. So you can see it's kind of hovering around 11, 11.77 volts. 
that should be 13 volts right there, folks, right out of the, uh, Now, what I'm doing is I'm testing the voltage at the battery terminals, not the battery itself, but I want to see how much juice is going from the alternator to the battery. And that's not enough. That's not enough to do anything. Today, it's even cold enough to put on my Walls Thermal jumpsuit, if you will. This thing is awesome. I was uh, just wearing my regular outfit and uh, I said, well, wait a minute, why, why be cold if I had this great purchase just sitting in the garage? Bought this off eBay, it was brand new, I think it was like $60, $70, but it's an extra large tall, because I'm like six foot three, six foot four, and uh, this thing is awesome, keeps me warm, uh, so I'm gonna go tackle the alternator, uh, because I don't feel like paying the core, so I'm gonna take the alternator, uh, buy the alternator, don't have to pay the core, and then throw the uh, new one in, so that should be fun. First thing we wanna do is disconnect the battery. With the battery removed, now we want to remove the battery tray so we can gain access to the alternator. When you're taking the battery tray off, don't forget you have a battery temperature connector that is plugged in, so you don't want to go crazy and rip that out. You'll be cursing. Next up is to loosen the belt tensioner, which is attached to the power steering pulley. There's that bolt there, and then the bolt right here. They're both 15 millimeters. The bolt right there, you got to loosen that up and then loosen that up too. I just sprayed some, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the PB blaster on there just to kind of get it all nice and clean. Kind of can't see it through there. Oh uh, yeah, you can. That didn't break off, thank God, uh, but it's all nice and clean. So just loosen that up and go ahead and grab that bolt off the other. Yeah, your belt is loose. Going ahead and uh, take this bolt off the top of the alternator. And, oh, and also don't forget the, uh, the uh, this positive uh, connector from the battery to uh, the back of the alternator. I have to take that off okay, as well. no more alternator. Two bolts and it was out. Uh, just disconnect the power that goes to the back of the alternator and then the plug right here. And that plug, the uh, power wire goes there and the plug goes here. It's a two prong, two prong plug right there. Uh, interesting enough, kind of talks about the externally regulated. This unit is regulated by the, the the vehicle computer. Yeah, I can read. Uh, so the PCM controls the uh, vehicle uh, voltage. Um, so the reason why your check, the reason why your um, computer, your OBD2 set uh, computer won't read the. This is fun spinning this. Uh, the reason why when your uh, alternator goes kaput, uh, the reason why it won't read the voltage and you won't be able to hook up your OBD2 diagnostic tool is because uh, I guess it sends a message to the computer that there's not enough voltage to run like any kind of basic test or check check engine codes or anything like that. Um, Cause I wanted to run a, a voltage check because uh, I have a fancy um, OBD2 thing that plugs right in and it said it couldn't connect. So when this goes bad, pardon me, sir, this computer takes over from there and puts that error message out there. So there's a couple other things too, like the OBD2 stuff. So, okay, let's head to the parts store. And uh, let's see, this one is called Tough One. <laughs> not so tough, chump, not so tough. I mean, it looks clean, it's not dirty. I don't see any sparks or arcing or any kind of problem. It just, it just gave itself up and it's quiet too, listen. Well, maybe not. Hmm. Well, I guess that does kind of make some noise. It's not the usual crinkling noise. And... Yeah. All right, let's stop fooling around. Let's go to the parts store and get this job over with. Stop at the parts store. Woo! -hoo! Slow ride. Take it easy. Oh yeah. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride here. So one of the things I wanted to share with you guys is my thoughts on, I guess, big part stores, big box part stores. And sometimes you get some really good knowledgeable people uh, who know what's going on. They really care about your car issues. They want you to, they want to work with you, help you diagnose. And, and look, I'm not a mechanic, right? Um, but I worked at this part store for a number of years, just part-time, just nights and weekends to help out with money. And they got great discounts too. I was building another Jeep and uh, you got 20% off your uh, parts as an employee. So that was awesome. So anyway, you know, but, but I always try to make it a point to 
at least lend a little bit of assistance. Um, sometimes you just get customers that are real jerky. Um, and, you know, it, it's tough to help folks like that, right? But you always try to do your best. Retail is difficult. So I, I just want to caveat that by saying, I know retail is difficult. I worked at this part store for 13 years and uh, I know what it's like. I've been in the trenches. You get some people who know what's going on with cars and some people who have absolutely no idea that they even have a car that they brought to the parts store. They don't know what they're looking for. So it's difficult. So let me just table that. Um, and this isn't, I'm not knocking the guy who did the test for me. I'm knocking the, the, uh, the corporation that really has not done a good job and has done a disservice to the employee as well as the customers. Uh, without giving them proper training. And it's all about training, right? We're all not born knowing what we know for our jobs. It's all training and experience and coaching and mentoring, right? So anyway, okay. So with that, I will delve into my uh, my story here. So as I'm going to this other big part store um, to get the part, um, pulled up, only a couple cars in the parking lot, sorry. Only a couple cars in a parking lot that I go in and go out, I figured, um, they have a machine that they use to test the alternator while the vehicle is running. And it'll tell you how much uh, amps and, and volts it's putting out so you can kind of confirm without taking the, the alternator out, you know, if it's good or bad or, you know, whatever. So got the guy's attention. He said, yeah, no problem. We'll go outside. Um, had a little difficulty setting it up. I said, you want me to start it? He's like, no, we can test the alternator without it running. I'm like, no, I think you have to have the, uh, you can test the battery without it running, but not the alternator. Maybe maybe he just didn't hear me but i said no that the test the alternator the vehicle has to be you know running so i said okay so i started it up and um, he couldn't get it to work so luckily i think it was the same type of machine that i had used so we kept going through some menu options and and i didn't want to insult the guy by by kind of showing him like never take a, a tool out of a man's hands right so i you know i i hesitated to to to, to tell him where it was going wrong but i kind of guided him a little bit so I guess he got frustrated enough with me um, and the, the machine not working to say, look, man, I don't know what the problem is, but uh, I guess you have to get your battery tested. Maybe your alternator's bad. Unhooked it and hooked the uh, battery clamps onto the machine and kind of looked at me and said, sorry. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll figure it out myself, thanks. And kind of walked away, mumbled something, and that was it. So, you know, I could have walked away, you know, give me your manager's number and you know, it's not about that, right? You know, the, the guy was a younger fella, uh, you know, maybe making his way through school or had a rough day or whatever. But, you know, I really I, I really find fault with the corporation that owns these monopolies and these big stores, and they don't do their employees justice by at least training them on the basics, right? The basic troubleshooting, you know, how to test an on air, how to test it. And maybe this kid was trained and he's not interested. He could give two shits. Whatever the situation is, so I'll default on the fact that he does care. Um, he just doesn't have the proper training. Uh, like I said, I'm not bashing the guy. I'm, I'm bashing the company, uh, and it's all companies, it's not just a particular one, but you know, any anywhere really. Um, you know, the big home improvement stores, the big parts stores. You know, they got a lot of folks. You know, they they, they hire them for for next to nothing, and they expect them to be master mechanics, right? And that's not fair. Um, you know, luckily for me. I know enough about cars to get me in trouble. I knew the alternator was bad. I knew the, the, the high level tests that I needed to do. And I knew eventually I would have to be getting an alternator. This was just a test to confirm my suspicions. Now I'm trying to imagine the guy or the girl who has absolutely no idea what's going on. They're in a jam, their voltage on their, the voltage gauge on their car is at zero and there, and there's a light on their dashboard. And they're probably freaking out. They don't know what they don't know what it means. Can I drive the car? Can I not drive the car? You know, the guy basically said, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Luckily, this parts store was only a few miles from my house, so God forbid if the thing didn't start, I know how to take care of myself, right? But what if I was some guy or girl that you know, the cars were not their thing, and they were like, uh, so that's it? Like, I basically, you tell me I'm I'm kind of screwed, and you don't have any solution. Uh, like, 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 what kind of customer service is that, right? Like, what kind of tools did the did the company give this employee to uh, to do their job, right? <clears throat> you know, I know people get on the job training, and I know people get training videos and everything, but you know, I, I guess it's just a culture, right? Maybe it's maybe it's the millennials, maybe it's the you know old people, you know, whatever it is. This isn't a cultural or millennial thing. This is just 
an experience I had with a big box store and it was really bad. Um, luckily for me, I didn't really need him to tell me what was wrong. I know it's wrong, it's a Jeep. <laughs> That's the problem, it's a Jeep. Um, you know, it's a big shit box with wheels and a seat. Um, but, I mean, the guy really could have could have cared less if I had a car problem. He was like, yeah, man, look, kid you not. He's like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you gotta get a charge and walked away. So, I'm not gonna call corporate, I'm not gonna call the store manager, it really doesn't get you anywhere. But, you know, if you run into these things, you know, just, just know that, you know, you're not alone, it's not you. Uh, it is difficult and, you know, be fortunate that, you know, you have videos like this on online, on YouTube, where you have guys that know a little bit about uh, things, you know, and, and, all, and just because there's videos online also doesn't make them 100% correct. This is just, you know, if you watch a video, it's, it's just how this one particular person solved the issue. Um, I've seen videos online that are completely, grossly ineffective and completely incorrect. Um, it, it's amazing what you see online and how incorrect stuff is. Um, not saying I'm perfect, uh, but so far my shit hasn't blown up, so that, that's a good sign. Um, but uh, And I got a shirt, too. Look, I look all official. I got my name on it and everything, too. Um, I tried to find on um, Amazon the certified YouTube mechanic patch. Uh, so I'm going to order that, and I think, that, uh, I think that'll make me real official. We're almost at the store. Sorry about the sun again. But yeah, sorry for the rant. I just figured I was driving and I kind of tell you my opinion about, uh, you know, the customer service you get from some people at some big box stores isn't the best and it is disappointing. That's really what it is. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed and it's a shame, right? And like I said, maybe the guy had a bad day. Maybe he does stellar customer service, but today, you know, maybe his dog's sick or he has a stomach ache or his girlfriend broke up with him or he just got a thousand dollar car bill. You know, whatever the, whatever the case may be. But uh, to not give the people who work at these big box stores the tools to at least help people diagnose what's going on, it's just a shame. So I'll end my story, and uh, we're going to go to the big box store and get the part now. So I right. just got back from the part store, and uh, one of the things I was talking about with the guy was how since the uh, PCM regulates the voltage, it could be an issue with the PCM. I, I'm, I'm going to say it's the alternator, um, but uh, one, of the, one of the remote um, causes of the voltage uh, gauge going down to zero and the check gauges and the low voltage on the alternator when it's running is the voltage regulator on the PCM. So we'll see what happens. Um, new ones anywhere from 100 to 300 bucks. Um, I highly doubt it's the computer. Um, very rarely do they go bad. Um, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, there's a new alternator. Got to say, I'm really proud of myself. The uh, workbench looks really nice. Not too bad. But there's a new alternator. Shiny little pulley. Part number, triple tested. Yeah, I'm sure. There you go. Looks good. All right, let's throw it in the bucket of bolts. Good, folks, always throw a little anti C's on the uh, bolts because uh, it's a Jeep. And everything seizes. Okay, once the top bolt and bottom bolt are secured, uh, just throw the belt back on and uh, start attaching your uh, little wire doodads and all that nonsense. So real, uh, real easy stuff. So we're just going to get those taken Battery care of. Battery tray is installed, and we are to the last phase, which is the battery. Dun dun dun. Okay, so a quick once over. Battery is installed and terminals are tightened battery hold down tightened flux capacitor fluxing everything's good this is tight all right let's just see what's going on hopefully it's just the alternator and not the alternator with the ecm issue so we'll see well so far so good the alternator is charging up to just about 14 volts which is where it normally lives um I would assume if it was the voltage regulator in the PCM, that voltage regulator would still be broken and you would still have an issue. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this one good for now. Uh, I just started it up so it's a little cold. Let's give right, it some we're gonna take you for a little test drive here around my, my town here. So right now the alternator's charging. Battery's probably a little low since I drove all the way from Baltimore. 
just on the battery itself. So, you know, I guess we'll just have to be cognizant of uh, any PCM issues, uh, know that that might be lurking in the background, but uh, right now I feel pretty confident that we've uh, nailed it with the alternator swap. 140 bucks, um, not bad. Uh, gone are the days where uh, alternators are 50, 60 bucks, I guess. Uh, would have been nice to, to wrangle a uh, alternator at that price, but you know, you get what you get. You know, Lifetime warranty, so you kind of can't beat it. Perfectly spaced out. Beautiful fall afternoon. six motor with lots of room on both sides um, I mean it's just it just makes sense it's a very practical thing to own uh, you can work on it yourself it's cheap parts are reasonable and uh, you know you get good satisfaction out of uh, having a problem and then fixing it yourself so Just about wraps it up here today at the Jeep shop. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. You learned a couple things. Uh, I thought the troubleshooting was actually pretty good. Um, lots of great things to read online, um, plus all the stuff that I've read uh, in the past as far as charging issues are concerned, things like that. You just never know when it's going to come into use. So today was a today was a good day at the shop. I'm glad it all got finished. Parts were uh, parts were in stock. Parts went in easy. Bolts didn't break off. So it was a, it was a good day. I got uh, home from Baltimore to Pennsylvania in, uh, in, in, good, in good shape uh, without having to call AAA, AKA uh, Mrs. Jeep Shop. I don't think she was too pleased about the uh, idea of having to come find me down there on 95 somewhere. But uh, look, uh, 
thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell so you can get notified uh, on the next video when this hunk of shit decides to break something else on us. So take care. Uh, keep on jeeping on. Leave your comments, concerns, questions, criticisms. I appreciate it. And uh, take care of yourself, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.